the International Science Council, as you know, is the global NGO representing science formed by the merger of the natural science community and the social science community. And 36 years after the Valach Conference, which one of our predecessors, EXU, uh, sponsored, which produced the scope report that called for international cooperation to prevent global warming and led to the formation of the IPCC in 1988, we faced the sad and urgent reality of having to have the side effect. What will it take to limit global warming, not just to 1.5 degrees, but 2 degrees? The warning signs are all around us, and yet countries, especially those that could make a real difference, duck and dive in making adequate action as opposed to wishful responses. But perhaps some of this is un perhaps understandable. Much focus has been by our community on detailed reports, assuming that placing complex models, technical language and their conclusions in front of policymakers is enough. Policymakers are caught. It's the basic principle of science advice that we must provide them with practical and scalable solutions, not just problems. And any specific political action must have social license from citizens. And the question I would pose is, are we helping sufficiently? As a person who worked at the Science Policy Society interface, I'll suggest four considerations that we could can take into account to accelerate progress. Many partial technological solutions already exist, but some of the obvious solutions involve trade-offs that many are not prepared to make. For example, the use of new technologies to reduce the emissions coming from agriculture and food production. And we must address this issue of how to get social licence. Secondly, citizens and countries will need to make major changes in the way they live their lives. This requires the use of social sciences to understand and address why policymakers and citizens alike see the problems as conceptual with solutions lying elsewhere or in only in future technologies. Of course, while we need these, we cannot wait. Everyone has to accept that trade-offs will be needed, and trade-offs in complex systems affect different stakeholders in different ways. This is not just about how the global north and global south debate who pays for 200 years of industrialization. The real trade-offs occur at the micro level, the farmer or rice grower who must change their practices, the massive shifts in transport that are needed, ending the hunger for coal and much more. What incentives will be needed to achieve these, these micro trade-offs? Do we need individual carbon credits, for example? We, thirdly, we need a better understanding of how collective decisions are made and how risk analyses are perceived. The science community and the activist community have got louder and louder and over the last 33 years. But with exceptions, the political responses remain relatively impervious, with solutions largely relying on deferred actions or new technologies. We need to take greater account here of the psychologies that impede us from hearing warnings until it's too late. And there are many lessons here to learn from COVID. Surely it's time for the multilateral system, as Johan suggested, to look at itself seriously and, and, and let a system that was designed immediately after the Second World War, World War is no longer fit for purpose. And at the very time the world needs an effective multilateral system, we face emerging nationalism. We need to understand what to do here. Nations must see that it's in their enlightened self-interest to work together to, uh, uh, to work together to address this challenge. And science itself must change. Climate science, all of you have done a great job. Many scientists have documented what is happening to the planet and its biota. Energy technologists and others are making great progress in finding technological solutions. But technologies alone will not solve the problem. We need social science, decision scientists, political scientists, intimately involved. Business as usual approaches to science and science funding are not commensurate with the timeline for achieving this challenge. A major qualitative and quantitative step change is needed. It requires much broader and bolder engagement and commitment from science funders, decision makers, philanthropists, 
governments, the private sector and civil society. Yet, funding systems remain siloed and largely developing in the national interest. We need true transdisciplinary approaches so that all the countries of the world are engaged in and can benefit from our knowledge. Later this month, after a year of consultation, the IFC will announce a global commission to try and develop a mechanism for addressing these, these knowledge gaps with actionable knowledge. We're determined to help address this immediate challenge of how to get greater political and social involvement in what you as the climate scientists have already demonstrated so clearly. Thank you.